Our next presentation is an efficient algorithm for fractal analysis and texture. And also Ferraz Costa uh, from ACMC USP São Carlos is going to present this, this work. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Alceu Costa. And today I will present the work, uh, an efficient algorithm for fractal analysis of texture. This work was done at USP São Carlos at the ACMC, Instituto de Ciências Matemáticas de Computação at the laboratory GBDI, Grupo de Base de Dados e Imagens. This work I made with my colleague, Gabriel Umpiri Mamani, and my supervisor, Agma Traina. So here's the outline of the presentation. First, uh, we will start with the introduction and some background. Then I will move to the proposed method, the SFTA. Then I will show some experiments and results, and I will finish with conclusions. So uh, this work is about texture feature extraction and why texture features are important. Uh, in many applications, the texture has a close relationship with image semantics. Let's take, for example, lung computer tomography. We can determine whether a tissue is healthier or unhealthy based on, on, on texture. Or, for example, in satellite images, we can use textures to infer whether a terrain is uh, forest, buildings, or water. A very well-known method for texture extraction is the hieroglyphic features. How do we extract the hieroglyphic features? First, we have a grayscale image. Then, we have to compute a set of gray level occurrence matrices from this image. Each matrix is computed at different, ang at different displacements and angles. So for each image, we will compute usually a set of matrices. Then, after we compute this set of matrices, we have to, to build our feature vector. To do that, we compute a set of statistics from each matrix. Example of statistics that we can compute include the correlation, entropy, contrast, and energy. Another well-known method for texture feature extraction is the Gabor filter banks. To compute the feature vector, first we have to generate a set of 2D filter kernels by varying a scale and orientation of a complex sinusoidal. And uh, texture features, our feature vector is obtained by first convolving the input image with all the filter kernels and then we can, for example, compute the mean energy or the mean uh, result of the response and also the standard deviation. But there's a problem. Uh, most of the research in texture analysis and texture feature extractions is aimed at uh, improving the quality of the extracted features. However, when we are dealing with a high number of images, we have also to concern or take care with the computational cost problem. For example, when we compute hieroglyphic features, which are fairly efficient, we, uh, we need to compute multiple displacement and angles. And when we compute the filter banks or the Gabor filter banks, we have to generate the filter kernels and also to convolve this, this set of filter kernels with the input images. Then, uh, in scenarios where, where we have a big volume of images, this can be a critical problem. Another approach that may be more efficient for texture feature extraction is the fractal analysis. Uh, what in fractal geometry, objects may have a fractional dimension. And this, this uh, fractal dimension can be used to infer the texture complexity of images. So uh, I, I have an example here, the Sierpinski triangle where it is built by each iteration, generating three copies of the or original object, and then generating copies at a scale one to two at each dimension. And since uh, the Sierpinski triangle have a well-defined um, uh, uh, construction rule, we can use this formula over here to estimate its fractal dimension. However, 
when we are interested in image extraction, feature extraction, we do not have a well-defined rule for the texture in the image. So we have to take another approach to infer or to compute the fractal, dim to the fractal dimension. Here we show the box counting algorithm. This is a way to compute this fractal dimension. First, we divide our image into a grid of where each square is of size epsilon. Then we generate a graph where the horizontal axis corresponds to the inverse of the log of epsilon and the vertical axis we have the log of the counting of, of squares or boxes. What is this count? It's the number of, uh, of squares that con contains at least one part of the object that we are trying to compute the fractal dimension from. So then we generate the, a point in this graph and by varying the epsilon value, we generate other points in this graph. And the fractal dimension can be computed as the slope of the line that we fit into these points using, for example, a less square, square fitting method. And the fractal dimension is the slope of this line. Last year, we at GBDI, at CMC USP, we developed a method that uses the fractal dimension to compute uh, texture features for long CT images. And the algorithm consisted in first decomposing the input image using an algorithm known as binary stack decomposition. Then for each binary image that we generated, we compute the fractal dimension from the image borders. And that was our, the feature vector. The fast fractal stack has one main advantage uh, besides uh, being able to efficient, to being able to, to, to describe the long CT images textures. It, was, it is efficient. We can compute it more efficiently than, for example, the hydraulic features. However, it has two main drawbacks. First, uh, since the, this binary stack decomposition algorithm, it, it does not consider the gray level distribution of the image, um, it, uh, it is not very versatile. What that means, for example, if you have a, a, a heterogeneous data set with many types of different textures, the fast fractal stack did not perform well. So now I will follow to our proposed method, the SFTA. This, the SFTA stands from segmentation-based fractal analysis of textures, and here's the this distraction scheme for the algorithm. First, we generate a set of binary images, similarly to that to how the fast fractal stacks works. However, um, we develop the new algorithm, a more robust for this task that makes it possible for the SFTA to work on data sets we where we have a great var variety of textures. Then for each binary image, we compute the fractal dimension and also we compute the area and the main gray level of the regions. Now I'll explain how, how this decomposition algorithm works. We have as input a grayscale image and the first step of the algorithm consists in finding a set of thresholds that we will use later to, to obtain our binary images. To obtain this set of, uh, this set of thresholds, we use a multi-level Otsu algorithm. What that means? First, we find, using the regular Otsu algorithm, the threshold that divides the input image into two regions. Then, we apply the Otsu algorithm recursively into the two resulting regions to obtain uh, the remaining thresholds. And we stop when we, when we have the number of thresholds that we want. This number of thresholds uh, denoted by n sub t is a user-defined a user parameter. After we have our thresholds, I will show how you can compute these binary images that we have over here. First, we take contiguous pairs of thresholds. For example, we have three thresholds here, t1, t2, and t3. So we take the thresholds t1 and t2 and apply what we call a two threshold segmentation. That's it. This binary image, the, uh, the pixels highlighted here, are the pixels whose gray level are between T1 and T2. Now we move on to the next pairs of thresholds, T2 and T3, and obtain the next binary image. And finally, we use the last uh, threshold, T3, and the maximum gray level to obtain the last binary image. 
We also apply regular thresholds using T1, T2, and T3 to obtain binary images. Uh, first, why we use these two threshold segmentation? Here I have a texture image, it's a floor, floor texture, where we have some stone chips here. And there are some stone chips that are highlighted by those yellow arrows that have median gray level. Gray level. So suppose we wanted to extract or, sip or fire into the borders of these median gray level Images using regular uh, thresholding. For example, we are trying to separate uh, the 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 using a threshold the dark regions of the images. We cannot highlight those and those medium gray level ships. The same happens when we consider light regions. We cannot find those stones. However, if we we use two thresholds, it is possible to find at least part of the of the of the contour of those uh, medium level stones uh, using thresholding. So here's how we build our feature factor. We have a set of binary images. We compute the area, that's the pixel count of the, binary, of the of a highlight region, the mean gray, le gray level of the region, and finally the fractal dimension from the border, the border of the region. Now, the experiments that we performed with the SFTA, we compared the SFTA to a number of feature extraction methods. FFS is our feature fast fractal stack method that I explained before. Hieroleak features are uh, also explained as Gabor, Instagram, basic textures. Basic texture is a feature vector built with the mean contrast, skewness kurtosis, entropy, and standard deviation of the gray level distribution. And finally, a feature vector that we call combined, it's a combination of the hieroleak, histogram, basic texture, and also Zernic moments. Zernic moments are features that are used to describe shapes and images. For, for evaluation, we use three data sets. The first is the key TH tips data set, publicly available, and that uh, have uh, 810 images divided into 10 classes. Another data set that we use is the texture surface data sets, also publicly available. And finally, a set of region of interest of long computed tomography images that we employed to evaluate the fast, fast fractal stack method. The first evaluation that we made was with respect to image retrieval. So we made a query with each Im image and verified whether the returned images were at f from the same class as the input as the query image. To do that, we built precision and recall curves, Preci where precision is the number of, re of relevant images retrieved by divided by the number of images retrieved. Recall is the number of relevant images retrieved divided by the total number of relevant images in the data set. So which image was used as a query center using key nearest neighbor queries using Euclidean distances? And how we can read a precision and recall graph? The idea is that the, be the, the closer the curve is to the top of the graph, the better. So here's the first precision and recall curve for the long CT data set. The SFTA will be always uh, marked as the black curve. And for this data set, SFTA obtained the best results for all recall levels. Then, moving on to the key TH tips, the SFTA tied with Gaber, obtained similar results for smaller recall levels. Gaber was better, but when we have higher recall levels, the precision of uh, SFTA was better. And finally, for textured surfaces data sets, um, SFTA. Uh, Obtain similar results of that of histogram for higher recall levels and similar to that of Gaber for smaller recall levels. However, uh, SFTA was always the highest or tied of another, another method. Now, we also evaluated our method for the task of classification and also how fast it was to extract those features. So to measure the classification accuracy, we employed the SFM classifier using a polynomial kernel and the SMEO algorithm for our training. And we, the results that we show are obtained by tenfold cross-validation. 
to measure distraction time, what we did was to uh, to uh, is the time that it took to to extract the feature vectors from from all the images from the data set. So I show here a an, an graph where the horizontal axis have the classification accuracy of each method, and the vertical axis I have the log of the extraction time. So for the longevity data set, the SFTA obtained the highest accuracy, and also its extraction time it was. 6.5 uh, times faster than Heralic and 17 times faster than Gabor. Uh, in these graphs, I will always compare SFTA to Gabor and Heralic because they are the, another texture feature extraction methods. Now, moving on to the KTH tips data set, the SFTA obtained out the, the highest accuracy but tiled with Gabor. However, it was five times faster than Gabor and 1.6 times faster than Heralic with respect to extraction time. Finally, for the textured surface data sets, uh, SFT obtained the highest accuracy, and also was faster than Heralic and Gabor with great margin. So conclusions, in this work, we proposed a new feature extraction method, the SFTA, and we compared it with, with other extraction method, more importantly, we compared it to Heralic and Gabor filter banks, which are a texture feature extraction method, and SFTA obtained higher or competitive uh, pre uh, precision and accuracy, both for CBIR and image classification. And also, the, maybe the most important characteristic of SFTA is that it is efficient. It's, it was at least uh, 1.6 times faster than Heralic, which is another fast extraction method, and at least 3.7 times faster than Gabor. So, thank you for the attention. Questions? Uh, thank you for the presentation and the good work. Um, I have a question regarding the number of threshold that you mentioned that the user has to choose. Uh, you mentioned that your method uh, uh, depends on uh, the user has to, to specify a number of threshold, whether two or three, so three for example in the, in the sample that you provided. So what would be a good uh, guidelines for the user to select the number of thresholds? Thank you. In the uh, presentation, I thought I wouldn't have time to, to show, but in the article, in the, in the paper, we have made an experiment uh, to see which value of uh, number of thresholds was the better. That is it, we built uh, for each data set, uh, the no, uh, we put a an, an, an graph where we had the number of thresholds and the classification accuracy. We obtained uh, the best results for uh, this number of thresholds at the number eight. It was our best results. This, it, this was uh, for all data sets. And I, I, I cannot guarantee that it would work for every data set that you can find out there, but for us, it was the, the best parameter. If you, if you increase this number, you won't get better results. More questions? So I have a question. Um, have you run some experiments to, to know if the good results you are obtaining is a, a consequence of the fractal dimension feature you are extracting or this subset of thresholding images you are getting? You know? So uh, for me, uh, it's difficult to know if the fractal is really effective or this set of threshold is doing no, uh, a better job. For each binary image, we st also extract area and mean grid level. Fractal is just a one of measures that you can use in this in this to measure the complexity or the shapes of the the, the binary images that you have. Maybe uh, if you use another measurement, that is also efficient because that's what that was a main idea of the work. It may work as well. We did not. We used the fractal because we knew it was good. It was fairly fast, and 
But in fact, if you use only fractal and you do not consider the area and the mean grid level, the method will not work as good as it works right now. Any other question? So let's thank the speaker again.